Cancerian friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020. And Cancers, I apologize this month there is no cute wheel over here, but I will make sure that you have the dates and the wheel will be returning, I promise, okay? Now, Cancers, as we're coming into November, we have just got this beautiful lineup of people coming over in the eat and greets. Omari Martin, just today, as I am recording this, is going to come over and talk about electional astrology as well as Matthew we met will be here Judith Hill Mecca Woods Demetrius Bagley we have just got a lineup of people coming over and the eat and greets I just feel like keep getting more and more fabulous and this community keeps opening and just wanting to share more with us so I hope to see you in the eat and greets as well if you want to watch the eat and greets ad free you can come over and join me on patreon and I look forward to seeing you live or seeing you how however we connect, okay? Now, Cancer, this month is a big month, not to mention you are ruled by the moon. So anytime we have not only obviously the new and the full moons of the month, but when we have one like we do that's a lunar eclipse this month, that does impact you. We've also got the new moon that's happening in Scorpio being a super moon because it's really close to the earth. So this is also going to impact you. So whenever we get into those seasons, Cancer, I just like to recommend that, you know, if you can take it easy or have some downtime or, or just do what needs to be done and give yourself a little bit of break, especially by the end of the month, I think that's really going to be good for you. But at the same time, I'm not saying sit down and go hide under a rock. You're ruled by the moon. You know how to work and meld and mold with that energy. So do you just know that that is a month where we've got some eclipse energy and some close to the earth energy on the table. Now, Mars is coming out of retrograde. Mercury's coming out of retrograde. Neptune's coming out of retrograde. Jupiter and Pluto have their last conjunction this month. So it is a month where we are getting after it over here for sure. So let's jump in here and break this down and see what's going on for you this month, Cancer, okay? Right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we have got Mercury coming out of retrograde in the energy of Libra. Now, this is going to light up your fourth house space. Now, as Mercury is out of retrograde and therefore direct, I want you to just keep in mind that in the fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, your roots, your parents, your internal psychological foundation, your emotional security, right? As Mercury is direct here today, today all of the the information might not show up. You might not have all of the answers today. Mercury needs to resume his orbit and get moving forward before we can really start to take advantage of a fair amount of his blessings. And really, we need him to get past 12 degrees of Scorpio. Then we can really take a deep breath and go, okay, we're solidly in forward motion. Because until then, you're just continuing to take forward motion on things you've already gone back over between your um, fourth house and your fifth house. So I just want to give you that to keep in mind there. But as Mercury does come out of retrograde, you are safer to sign those contracts, make some decisions, think about things, especially in terms of the balance of your home, the relationships in your home. Now you have a little bit more of a clear pathway to make decisions about those interpersonal relationships, okay? Now on the 10th, we're getting there. We're getting there. Mercury is actually going to move forward back into the energy of Scorpio. So like I said, we're getting there. We're going to push that 12 degrees and then we can really take advantage of the forward motion. And to be clear, I say 12 degrees because when Mercury went retrograde, he went retrograde at 12 degrees of Scorpio and then backed up into the energy of Libra. So we really need him to get to 12 degrees so that we can kind of start the journey again, okay? But as Mercury moves forward into the energy of Scorpio, he comes back into this fifth house place for you. Now, Mercury in Scorpio is a phenomenal observer. So in your fifth house, whether that be true love and romance and conversations that are loving and self-expressive and joyful and pleasurable, um, or this is conversations or decisions that need to be made around the children or a new project that you're starting, if this is conception or things that you're going to take a risk on, Mercury in Scorpio is a deep, really good observer. So you've already seen some things here. And what's the depth of the conversation that's happening here? What's the depth of conversation that needs to happen in your relationships at this particular time in this level? And I also think that Mercury and Scorpio is like 
we need to just say it, right? You stop being so incredibly polite. There's still courteousness, but you stop being so incredibly polite and you're like, I need to just say this. I need to just do this. I need to handle this portion of the conversation and I need to speak intimately. I need to speak into the truth. So you may find a fair amount of that coming up in this very self-expressive energy as well. Now on the 12th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto come together for the third of their conjunctions that we've seen this year. In April, we saw them come together for the first time and this all is happening in your relationship zone so boom shakalaka like something happened in terms of your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships and I even include your relationship of you with you in this as well because as Jupiter and Pluto come together this is that I can do it I can achieve success energy it's like Sonic the Hedgehog do, 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 do. and you realize there's this inner strength that is available for you to do things to be effective to meet challenges to have, be successful but you likely saw it happen an event or something happened right here as Jupiter and Pluto came together in um April and then in June they were both retrograde so you reviewed that you rethought about it you relooked at it you re-edited it and now as they come together for this third time it's like boom let's bring this to flourishing because now truly you can make something happen in this area so I wouldn't be surprised if some of you didn't get married you entered into a serious relationship even if it was a business relationship you yourself cancer because this is Capricorn energy across the street you know what were you challenged within yourself to reset in your own structures and your beliefs and your identity right where were you tasked with cancer how have we been showing up in relation because whatever you saw in that I think now you are tasked with really showing up or stepping into these relationships in a different way but it's about efficiency and it's about success as we get to the 14th we see mars coming out of retrograde thank you very much in the energy of aries and this is the tip top of your chart so if things with your career or work or projects you've been wanting to get done or even truly i think for some of you if you've been in a couplehood or a partnerhood or something like that where we would know you by a different name or we would know your reputation we would know you as attached to something different Differently. If it's felt like it's been on pause or you've lacked motivation now as Mars comes out of retrograde in the energy of Aries, you're able to see these projects, these events moving forward to include, like I said, if one of you or some of you is getting married, this could also be that energy where it's like, yeah, we could definitely be planning the wedding ceremony at this The other thing I highly consider as Mars is out of retrograde is that Mars is a um, in a fellow cardinal energy, you are a cardinal energy. So this idea of trusting your instinct and taking action as Mars comes out of retrograde is actually going to be, I think, very, very abundant. So I would ask you, Cancer, in your career, what do you want next? What did you find out that your desires are and the strategy that you're using to get to those things, whether it be the career or it be what we know you as, that what your next reputation supports, what's the gift that you're giving to the world, even if that is you become someone's husband you become someone's wife, you become a political figure, you become, you know, the best librarian ever. What is it and what is your strategy to get there? Because now Mars is going to ask for that assertive action from you to make this work and to walk that thing forward, okay? On the 15th of November, we see that new moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. This will light up your fifth house space. So we're going to plant those seeds of intention to begin something new. Take a risk. Love big. Love joyfully. Bring joy into your life. Connect at a, at a passionate level of of desire and intimacy with your children, your family, the people you love, your own ideas. Do that online, um, you, you know, speak easy kind of poetry seminar or slam. Do that summit. Whatever it is, you're going to plant your seeds of intention, but there's a lot of desire that comes with Scorpio energy. You're digging down into the depths of who you are to begin something in this very joyful, expressive area. Now, some people will be having babies at this particular moon, which I think is very exciting. And so if that is you, whether that be that you're actually having a baby, you're adopting a baby, whatever it is, I'm very excited for you and welcome to your, your new traveler and family member. Number. On the 21st, we're going to see a couple things happening. First of all, Venus is going to move into the energy of Scorpio. So also pulling that attraction energy into this fifth house. Venus attracts in. Venus is like, come on over here, harmony and opportunities and relationships and finances. But whatever it is, Venus is trying to attract in some harmony, some goodness and some balance into this fifth house area of your life. So truly, could this be the time where a project you started back in 
in April that was like on pause or it felt like you just couldn't quite figure out like your esteem wasn't in alignment with attracting, you know, that beginning to you and it's able to happen now. Oh, I'm thinking too. I'm not sure who this is. Please let me know if this is you, but you have a partner that is maybe um you guys are deepening. You're deepening. Something's happening for them and it's causing you to deepen with them. And so there's a lot of expression that's happening here. I really like that for you. Um and you're also I think seeing in in your own way cancer i think you're seeing ways that maybe you're having to open up and share more with people around you about kind of some things that have been going on i would think that they are issues of maybe faith or they're if issues of fear or i have this sense of like maybe powerlessness or something like that that comes up please let me know if that's you now also on the same day we've got the sun moving into the energy of sagittarius so this is going to light up your sixth house space the sun is light heat life and motivation and you're going to want to stretch sagittarius in this sixth house area so in your daily routines it's like something bigger than yourself something greater than yourself something beyond that horizon you want to get out there and see it and you want to expand so the sixth house House, daily routines health and wellness being of service to other people if you are um, you do work independently or you're a freelance person or something like that Sagittarius is like well I think that we can set goals that are maybe a little bit higher let's stretch out a little bit more and I would even ask you too if this keeps coming back I keep seeing you in a window of faith it's like there's like a, a light around you cancer so in your daily routine do you feel connected to some really grounding belief or or spiritual principle or something like that that you're actually seeking comfort and you're able to live your life by in a way that lets you expand it's like you become superhuman by living tapped into the flow of this energy so in your daily routine in your daily life do you feel tapped in to some kind of faith i think that's a wonderful thing to evaluate now on the 29th of November, we see Neptune coming out of retrograde, of course, in the energy of Pisces, lighting up your ninth house space. So this will bring travel back to the table. This also brings an ideal, right? Like in that place of faith that I was just talking to you about, like what's real, what's not. You got to try to do things on your own or try and do things by a certain set of principles for however long you got to try and do them. And then maybe you figure out something else works, right? So it's like as Neptune has waxed and waned as this retrograde has happened and now it's direct, I think you're going, okay, wait, I can discern, you know, maybe the real from the, the false. Um, and see a direction to take that and it helps you reset and reframe ideals and reasons why you would live by those ideals with this particular energy. I also think that in this Neptunian kind of way, this allows for a, a higher minded forgiveness that becomes available for you. You're like, yeah, I just, I don't want to be out in the world this way anymore. Or I don't want to be known this way, or I don't, I don't even want to have these ideas about this particular um, set of beliefs or this particular culture. I really want to experience this. Some of you, um, I don't even think this is some of you. I think this is one of you very specifically. You are, it's a course where maybe you were practicing to be a translator or something like that this is you being able to be in that course and be successful with it. Oh, I really would love to know if that's you. What language are you studying? That's interesting, okay? Now, as we close out this month, we've got the full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini. This will be back here in your 12th house space. Now, because it is a lunar eclipse, it's the intensity of the moon, which like I said, take care of yourself, take downtime if you need to, but also you're a pro at working with that moon energy, so do you. In the energy of Gemini though, this is talking about the past. This is talking about things that you're ready to let come to end. This is talking about the behavior patterns and the ideas that have maybe been in the way of you being successful. I do absolutely believe that this could be a connection with somebody from the past that comes in and you're able to like put some healing here. This is like you could even be going back to something in the past and trying to heal something you said to someone with something that you wrote and it had um, power and impact and effect over them. So if there is something like that that you're needing to heal or you're even needing to heal your mind, Gemini is the energy of conversation of the mind of the details and you're going back in there and you're allowing some healing and some reframing of your own thinking to happen. This will be a beautiful moon to help you read 
redefine this area and therefore redefine you over the next six months. So even if this is just in your daily spiritual practice, it's like you're going back in there and re-looking at, do I need to go on a mental diet, right? What's What are my thoughts become my things? What's the alignment in my head and my heart? Where's the creativity in me that should be alive and well that comes from this 12th house? Do I have ideas that are maybe blocking that or do I have ideas bubbling back here that I can't wait to get ready to share with the world? So whatever it is, that full moon is going to end have you acknowledge or make an adjustment over this next six months instead of four weeks to this particular area. All right, Cancers, I think it's going to be a good month, a busy month. Things begin to move forward. As we get into December, I think we all have much bigger deep breaths that are happening because we are back in a more forward motion as we get into December. But let's just do November 1st, okay? All right, Cancers, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.